we will learn about exception handling in C++. So exception handling is a kind of error handling which is particular about C++ and we will see how it's done. So usual error handling, so what all things a code can do. So first thing is that it can terminate the program. So if you get any error, just terminate the program. This is one way, So, but that's like means you are done, means there will be no further possibility of handling the error. So you have just terminated the program. Second one is return a value representing error that, okay, if I'm successful, I return one. If I fail, then return zero, something like that. So this is another way. <laughs> Third one is return a legal value, leave program in illegal state. Okay, so return some legal value. So this is something like error numbers in C. So what happens if something fails in like say standard library? So they put error number to some specific value and then they return. Okay, so but that's if you don't check that error number, then you are never going to find also that there was an error. Okay. So, and even in concurrent multiple thread programming, so this is not very useful. Another one is call a function supplied in for error handling. So these are the ways to handle. And what happens is that if you write a code with a lot of error handling, it becomes really complicated. So you will have all different kinds of like a if success, then do something else error then do something so these kind of code lot of if else will be there and the error handling code you put like if there is some particular error a put error value is equal to one if some other error happens put error value is equal to five something like that so it it makes the code very look not very clean okay so c plus plus what it provides is called exception handling and it's an alternative to traditional method where it separates error handling code from the ordinary code. Okay, so you now have a very clean code and error handling is done separately and the normal code logic is written separately in the normal case. So it makes program more readable. First thing is that when you are even coding or reading a code, it makes more sense to you and it is more amenable to tools also so a lot of tools that read the code and generate code all those can be used more comfortably okay so let's see what it is exactly so for example we have a function <coughs> so it the code that is right written in normal way so what we expect that okay some error might occur here but this is the logic so we put it in a try block so this piece of code is a piece of code that might generate some kind of exception or error which needs to be handled. So this is the normal code and here in the catch. So this is the catch. So here we catch all different kind of exceptions. So if this piece of code throws some exception, so those will be handled here in the catch block. So if there is an, a mathematical error can occur here. So if it is an overflow. It will be handled here. It is if it is some other mathematical error, it will be handled here. OK, so this is what happens. So try block where I write the normal ordinary code and catch block where we handle the exceptional cases. OK, so now this looks very clean here. I write my main logic and here I handle exceptions and it doesn't becomes a very non clean code, Okay, a very dirty piece of code. <laughs> so a few things about now exceptions so grouping exceptions so even if i say that okay i can handle mathematical error so first let's see exception so it's a kind of object a class in c plus plus which gives you information about the error that okay this error occurred if it's a mathematical error then it is an integer overflow underflow divide by zero error file not found error so many errors can happen so this object is thrown and it gives you information it gives you information that okay what was problem so now it's important that we 
use the hierarchy in C++ derivation grouping the exceptions so we have a base class let's say maths error now again maths error can be anything we have a maths error class okay now there can be so many errors so overflow error can be there this is specific kind of mathematical error underflow can also occur okay underflow then there can be divide by zero error so divide by zero so these are all derived classes from the mathematical error class and we so this is the hierarchy and now what we do is that we will handle all these errors so what happens is that a few things to rem remember so when there is a exception occurs or if some divide by zero let's say it is occurring so let's see one example so we have something like um adding two integers and let's say overflow occurs and we have a function that checks overflow so int add int x into y so two ints are passed and if x is greater than zero i check now that okay is the sum overflowing so if x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero so i'm just doing some partial handling of just positive integers here i i'm assuming that you are passing me positive ints two ints and then I say that okay, if x is greater than int max minus y, then means both of them will not overflow. The sum will not overflow. So if this is the case, so if it overflows, if x is greater than int max minus y, it will overflow. And in that case, I will create overflow over an object of class overflow and I will throw that. So this means this addition function can handle overflow by throwing this error throw overflow object and otherwise it just returns x plus y in normal case now how will i write so this is the library code okay so the library function and now i'm using this function here in void f so this function uses int i1 is equal to add 1 comma 5 this will run fine int i2 is equal to add int max and 10 so now this will be overflowing okay so what will happen is I will catch math error ampersand m and this will now do m dot print error. So let's see what is this class. Okay, math error. So here we have math error. So this class is math error and let's say besides other normal things, I have one public virtual function print error and it says that const c out math error. So it says that it's a math error. But let's say now I've derived overflow class so public math error and it's also virtual function print error here and it says overflow so now to one important thing if i want that it's a math error is handling this and m dot print error so what will happen here is this will print fine so it will print for us what it will print overflow but as I discussed in my last lecture, if you write here math error m, then what will happen is this m dot print error, it would the problem of slicing sliced object will occur, and what will happen is m dot print error will call the base method math base class math error print error function. Okay. So it will now print math error and it will not give you specific information that overflow has occurred. So it's always good to use here math error ampersand m so that slicing problem doesn't happen. Okay. So this was the structure. So in the library function which the client code uses. So it, it throws it handles errors by throwing it. If it cannot handle some error, it expects the client code to handle it. So it just throws overflow occurred and here it has to handle it by catch m dot print error it will do so this is the handling of the error and here it is more readable the logic is here and the catching of the error is here okay so there is another thing called rethrow it means i cannot handle even though i have a catch block there but if i find that okay i cannot handle that code i will rethrow it and it will be caught at upper level okay so here math error so our code 
through some math error but if i cannot handle that math error so if i cannot handle i rethrow it so i will just try to throw without any object so it means it's rethrowing to some other level to handle it next thing is scratch every exception so this is usually done that okay i want some kind of cleanup code so for example i did uh, a star ptr is equal to new a and then what i did i wrote some code and this is classical memory leak problem and then i say delete ptr but what happens if some exception is here so in that case what will happen is there can be many different kind of error can occur here based on some what functions i'm calling or what code i'm executing so what i can do here is try and i don't know what someone will write here so what i do try a star ptr a is a class is equal to new a and then so some piece of code is there and then what happens is because i'm not sure now if exception happens how will i delete this so i do catch and here all different kind of errors will be caught and here i will write okay so clean up code will be delete so what will happen delete ptr will happen so this is just for cleanup and i'm not able to i might not be able to handle all these errors because i don't know what is being written here or which functions are getting called and what errors that can be caused so then i can rethrow by saying throw okay so this will rethrow to handle all other cases so this was about catching every exception so cleanup code is there so order of handler is also important so if you have a try block you have some code here then catch so this is error e1 okay error 1 e1 i handle then catch error 2 e2 so this way it will always catch based on the what which one comes first okay so error if i write here something like catch dot 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 epsilon so it will handle all the case here and this part of the code will never go so what whichever error it matches first it will go there okay so this is all about the exception handling in c++ and it's very important if you are writing a code in at industry level you need to handle all kind of exceptions in order to become a good coder so you should always be careful about error handling in your code it's not just your some school level coding that you just do the correct normal coding but you have to handle all the errors and that's very important and that's where error handling comes and exception handling in c++ so i hope you like this video and if you like this video please subscribe to my youtube channel and share it 